Hey, you've got camera therapy with Mark Shelley Photography. I'm Mark. And we're going to be talking about low light filming today underwater and low, low, low visibility filming underwater, how it can be done. So I've picked out some pictures that uh, I'm going to show. We're going to break it down, what I do and how I created these images. So let's get started again with Caribma Therapy, Mark Shelley Photography. I'm Mark. Okay, I'm back, and uh, that's actually a photograph of me. One of the first things I do when I get in the water, I always do a selfie. Not because I want to show it to anybody, but that's why I'm getting my numbers down. I know the strobes are firing, they're pointing in the right direction. I always, always, always do a selfie. Now, let me start off by saying I'm shooting a, a pro camera. I shoot Nikon. I'm shooting a 2.8, I'm sorry, a 10.5 millimeter 2.8 lens. Unbelievably nice piece of glass. I shoot manual and also shoot what's called raw. And, uh, and all those go play in part here and I'll kind of go through all those again, you know. By shooting manual, I can, I can override and use practically, I can use any setting I want. I even shoot manual on my strokes. I don't let the camera decide anything. So if you're shooting automatic and very, very low visibility, you know, again, the camera's going to take the safest picture. It might not necessarily mean it's the, the best picture. Um, one of the reasons I shoot RAW versus JPEG. RAW, you save all the information. It's like the old film days where um, you're able to um, keep the negative and get all the information. I'm getting 100% of the information. So long story short, one of the reasons I'm taking that selfie right here of me is to get all my numbers down right and when I'm shooting. I'm actually shooting at a 200 ISO here. F10, I like high F numbers or sharp pictures at 1 250th of a second. That's fast. But then again, you got to realize my camera's out in front of me by three feet, two and a half, three feet arm's length. So I got a big wide angle lens here. So let me go on to the next picture, what I'm going to be doing here. These were actually shot about a week and a half ago. Let me move uh, Let me move this over so it's in the right frame here. There we go. That's my buddy Steve. We are diving last weekend at a uh, local quarry, and the water's starting to turn over from the thermal climb, but we literally had three-foot visibility. Plus, they had all this rain over the last week or two, and um, so we've got a lot, of, a lot of debris, a lot of things floating around the water. So here's Steve with our new video light systems that we're using by uh, Orca Torch, uh, the D900Vs. These are 200, 2,200 lumen each, so we're putting out a lot of light here. Steve knows from experience he's got to get really close to somebody we're going to refer to as the lady in the tub right here. So he's real, real close to her, uh, literally with inches. I am probably less than two feet from him, based again on my 10.5 millimeter lens. So being close helps out. Having some fill-in light with these uh, video lights helps out, and then uh, shooting dual strobes around three-fourths power is typically what I like. But I, um, I, when I'm shooting in low, low visibility, I like to stay within a, a small window, maybe two feet by two feet, and that's that's a good good distance to start with because of again all the back scatter and all the particulate that we had in the water. Let me move on to another photograph here. Uh, again, there's Steve. Uh, actually, he's actually looking in on a uh, into a bus. Again, we got the big video lights. You see all this, everything's being stirred up. That's for me just swimming into there. There's a lot of silt and sediment, but we're still able to pull off the image. But again, I'm shooting real close. I mean, I am. I am. I can literally reach out and touch Steve. That's how close the 10.5 millimeter lens. So you, going wide, wide, wide helps you out. Having some fill-in lights where strobes are far, far apart. I'm not trying to get any of that silt and sediment floating around in there. So and I'm staying with a very, very tight, tight, tight window. Trying to get a picture of Steve. Again, this is not cropped or anything. This is actually the uh, edited version, but it's a, it's a, it's a, no, it's a low-light situation. Here's the next one. Let me move it over here so you can see it. All right, Steve has come into the bus. You know, me stirring some things up there, this is what we've got. It's not the best conditions. Visibility from uh, from uh, outside, about three feet, three foot has moved down to about 15 inches. You can see all this particulate. Steve's shining the light back at him to help fill out and minimizing some of that backscatter that we're going to get from the strobes. Um, I am, again, a very, very short distance, two feet or so less than, uh, from Steve. you got to be close. 
pick your subject and uh, it, it's surprising uh, how light sensitive these cameras are. Let me give you these numbers. You'll see a, a, um, a pattern here. The last two pictures were the same numbers. I shoot 200 ISO because I'm close. I don't, I, I, I don't need to be bumping it up any and I want the best quality right there. I'm shooting a, a F9, a tight, tight, tight number and one 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 sixtieth no I'm sorry don't one 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 sixtieth of a shutter speed it's a fast shutter speed and the reason I want fast and I want a high f number is that we're not letting a lot of this extra sediment coming in we're going to get a tight tight picture real real fast so we're able to pull this off in 15 inches of visibility with the help again with these Orca Torch DV 900 lights last picture I'm going to show you here let me move over there. Again, I love doing this in the fall time because of just, again, low light um, and silting conditions and all that. I love leaves. And uh, I end up tossing them up in the water, up toward the surface. Why not utilize the best visibility and the best amount of light I can get? My numbers, again, I like 200 ISO. I'm shooting an F18. That's, that's doesn't get any smaller than that. At 1 250th of a second. My strobes are really, really close. I'm shooting a 10.5 millimeter lens, and you can just see how sharp this is. And uh, it brings out the color and everything else. So, just to kind of wrap it all up, uh, if, you're, if you're shooting a low visibility, I would say try to utilize as much surface light as you can. If you're shooting automatic cameras, uh, again, you know, stay within your small window. Uh, don't be afraid to you know, find out what your depth of field is. If it's two feet from uh, or, or for whatever the max is, the lens is, work with as, as close as you can to your, to your subject just to minimize any type of particulate in the water and light reflection from your strobe or your video lights, whatever you're using. So I'm going to wrap it up. Hey, this is uh, Camera Therapy with Mark and Shelley Photography. You've got Mark talking to you. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. Be safe as two. Bye-bye.